One of the changes that I've been most surprised by is just how rapidly climate change is affecting ecosystems and fisheries. And so in the area that I work in, in the Northeast US, we've seen rapid warming in that region punctuated by marine heat waves. And fisheries are feeling the response from these events immediately through changes in the species they target. Climate change is impacting marine ecosystems in numerous ways. Probably the most obvious one is a change in distribution of fish. Uh, so in temperate ecosystems such as the North Sea, we are starting to see more and more warm water species um, appearing. And that's something that we see firsthand on board of scientific surveys in the, in the species that we sample. Uh, it's also really apparent from the data if you start analyzing the data. So that change in distribution of species and of species composition um, can have and will have consequences for uh, marine fisheries and the people that depend on them. For example, in the North Sea, in the past, every time we used to get a, a very cold winter, we used to get die off of, of things like sole, which is a warm water fish. And then that would affect the populations for a few years into the future. And now, obviously, we're not getting those cold spells. And so species like sole are able to expand and persist, whereas in the past, their populations would be held back. And similarly, heat waves are affecting fish the other way around, where we now get a lot more hot weather, so the cold water species are being affected by these sudden heat wave events. Many changes that we look for related to climate change are often focused on individual species, sometimes the ones that are most apparent in ecosystems. But really, the surprising changes that I think are occurring in ecosystems are those that play out over multiple species. Changes as species shift their distribution and change in terms of composition of the species in certain areas alter habitats available to different species and competition for those habitats as well as interactions between predators and prey. And so as you have new species moving into an area, they may prey upon other species that already exist in that area. And this creates much more complex responses of the ecosystem to climate change that we are still just developing you know, initial understandings of and recognizing that our studies need to account for this greater complexity. I work quite a lot on, on long-term climate change that take many decades, many centuries. Um, but actually a lot of climate change happens very quickly. Um, you get a sudden event, so a heat wave or a sudden storm, and that can really affect ecosystems and industry. And so we particularly, where I work, but in a lot of places around the world, started to look at things like the impacts of storminess on the fishing industry, but also how these sudden events ripple through the food webs. Some extreme events have been studied quite a lot. So things like coral bleaching, which have massive effects for many years to come. Uh, but things like the storminess, it's been studied very little because it's very difficult to predict whether it's going to get stormier or less stormy in the future. But what we do know is, for example, in the UK, there was a, a series of massive storms in 2013, 2014. And that had a massive effect on the fishing industry because the fishing boats couldn't go out to sea for about six to eight weeks. And so we're now trying to look at what was it? Was it wind speed? Was it wave height that, uh, that led to the disruption in the fishing industry? And can we predict that in the future? Throughout my career, I've worked a lot on, on fisheries and um, fishermen tend to be very interested in how, what can impact the quota, the amount of fish uh, that they catch. And in the past, they tend to not care too much about long-term issues such as climate change. Uh, however, this has changed. Uh, we now get stakeholders coming to us, uh, or to ISIS in general, asking advice about climate change and how to tackle climate change. Uh, and that's something, something that we see across all fisheries and across the whole spectrum of, of stakeholders, which to me indicates that there is an urgency uh, because people are realizing that climate change is affecting them and that we need to address this issue. I've been involved in a number of projects where we are working with fishermen and local communities to really understand not only how they're being affected by climate change, but how they are adapting to and responding to the changes they're experiencing. And I have been impressed by 
the changes they are already undertaking, the speed at which they're able to adopt those changes in some cases, um, as well as how they're thinking about the necessity for changes in the future. And many of the future changes will require supporting efforts that come through the management system. One thing that we are currently working on is on how to better integrate the impact of climate change into the ecosystem overviews, which is a product designed for managers and for stakeholders. Um, so if we do um, um, a good job in integrating that climate impact, then managers can use this information and integrate it into management plans. Throughout my time as a chair of the strategic initiative of climate change impact on marine ecosystems, what has really struck me is that there is a lot we know about the impact of climate change on oceans and marine ecosystems. There is a wealth of knowledge. However, this knowledge is not very uh, translated into advice. We are still struggling to use this information and to apply it in, in, in real life uh, to help managing our resources. We compile and synthesize information on how ocean ecosystems and marine fisheries are being affected by climate change, as well as the adaptive responses that we're seeing in those systems. We share that information not only within the ICES community, but this is a joint initiative with Pisces, so we learn from and share information to the Pacific community as well. What I would hope people could do when getting involved in SICME is to help us translating all this scientific information into advice and into something that could be applied to, to fisheries and to marine ecosystems. Um, one example of such interactions could be uh, a greater involvement of social scientists to help us bridging the gap between scientists and stakeholders. I think we've got to be prepared for both those long-term gradual changes but also these short-term things. And so I think we have to sort of start preparing and building resilience now. Trying to have eyes on the water, have observation systems in place, and really also listening to industry participants to understand changes as they occur. And then thinking about how we can anticipate and perhaps even forecast those changes in the future so that everyone from fishermen to managers can make better decisions in the context of rapidly changing ecosystems.